Hey guys, what's up? This is the Blender Bro, and I am back with another Blender Quick Tip. In this Quick Tip, I will show you how to create a basic tracking scene from scratch. Now, I'm posting this Quick Tip because I know that a lot of you um, aren't really that interested about the ins and outs of what, what, about what the tracking scene is when you when the Blender creates it. All I, I, all I know is, basically, I know that a lot of you guys you usually go down to solve, set up tracking scene, click there, and just let Blender actually set up the tracking scene for you. But I also know that a lot of you are advanced motion trackers and advanced compositors especially, and want to know the ins and outs about what Blender does to create the basic, the basic tracking scene. And so in this video, I'm going to give you the inside look about what Blender does what the basic Blender camera tracking scene is, and hopefully this information will help you um, further, um, further, expand the, further expand the tracking scene and the no compositing node tree, so that way you can create your tracking scene, a tracking scene of your very own. Okay, so if you're ready, let's get started. So right here in the movie clip editor, I have set up a basic, uh, I've opened up a movie clip and I already tracked it, it has an average solve error of 0.47. It this doesn't really matter in this case. And but also I have some lens distortion, which is will be kind of important um, when it comes to you know um, creating the tracking scene, especially if you're uh, there is some lens distortion. But basically, what we're gonna do. Um, actually, I did forget to point out this tutorial will be um, based on how to create a basic tracking scene in the cy cycles render engine. Um, if you want to do this in a Blender internal engine, then I recommend um, going to the Blender Cloud and subscribing to uh, TrackMesh Blend and check, taking a look at chat at at the compositing chapter and um, setting doing your first tracking scene. And Sebastian Kuneg will show you um, the inside outs of um, setting up your basic tracking scene in the Blender internal engine. But for this tutorial, I'm using the Cycles Render Engine because a lot of you advanced, um, advanced, um, most of trackers are probably using the Cycles Engine right now, and, and basically it's, it provides a lot more realistic renders than the Blender Internal Engine. But anyway, saying that, let, in saying that, let's get started. So, before we do anything else, we're gonna go into Solve, and we're gonna scroll down here to Set as Background, because we want the movie clip that is in the movie clip editor to be set as the current background for the camera. Then we go up to default. Now, before we go any further, I'm actually going to set my render preset to PVNTSC 16 by 16.9 because that's 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 the size that I shot the movie clip at. And um, um, now um, and also I'm going to go ahead and um turn on the screencast key so that way you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now once you're in the 3D viewport, you're going to now need to go into the options panel, which is basically can be shown by hitting N right over here. And and then you just go ahead and scroll down. And by default, motion tracking is enabled. This is fine for now, but background images isn't. So go ahead and enable background image, images, add image, movie clip, and for, set the axes only to camera because that's the only um, kind of view that we need. And we'll go ahead and set the opacity to full for now, just so we can see the movie clip. And we'll also set it to render undistorted, so that way we can see what we're doing. And if we, and I also um, will also enable the proxy size to 50% because that's I already set a proxy. You can do that if you want. You can do that on your own. So now that we have set up the background, the back, the background image for the camera, we're now going to create two layers. They are going to be called the foreground and the background layers. So to set up those two layers, we go into the layers panel, and we have and Blender has already created a one layer. We're gonna go ahead, double click on it, and rename this to foreground. And we're gonna click the plus icon to add in a new layer. We'll call this one background. Okay, so I select e so now so now select the foreground layer and then hold down shift and select both the top and the bottom scene or the first and the uh, 16 in this case. And for the layer, go ahead and select the first layer here at the top. And for the mask layer, select the bottommost one. 
Now, this, uh, the sixth layer down here, this one at the bottom, is going to be the um, background layer at this point, but it's going to be masked out. Um, well, that probably won't make sense, but it's important that you, it's important that you enable this bottom layer right here, and you'll probably understand when um, I show you. Under passes, go ahead and go ahead and enable um, vector right here. Enable vector, and in the background, and in the background layer, we already have. These two scenes already enabled, so we're good here. And then the lay and then the layers for this one select the bottom layer right here, or the sixth layer in this case. And under passes, enable both shadow and ambient occlusion. Because we are going because we're gonna allow so whatever objects are in that layer, we're just gonna cast some shadows and gonna provide some ambient occlusion. Now I also I also did forget to mention one thing. Um go down here to film. And enable transparent because if you don't select this, it'll because if you don't enable transparent, it'll instead render the background color that is in the world properties right here. But now that we're now that we're in the world properties, go ahead and enable ambient occlusion and set the factor to 0 0.05 and set the distance to one. All right, so we basically set up our layers and we basically set up our world properties. Now it's time to, you know, set every, all the objects in the scene. First off, we need to put the, our objects in the right layers, okay? So we select the cube right here and we need to make sure that it's on the first layer right here. Now, the cube doesn't have to be the only thing that's in the scene. You can add multiple objects, you know, you can add, you know, like cylinders, monkeys, uh, uh, sphere, spheres or spears, sorry, whatever, it's up to you. Now, the lamp right here, now this could be either a sun lamp or an aer aerial lamp, but we'll get to that in a sec. But for right now, hit M, and we're going to go ahead, pull down Shift, and select the bottommost layer too, because we want it to be on both the foreground and the background layer, okay? And the camera, make sure that is on the first layer too. Now, if we were to look through the camera, Right now, if we were to just look through it and hit Alt A to playback, you could see that the cube um, or, or the object that's in our scene is not moving along with the camera motion um, in our movie clip right here. And that is because our camera currently doesn't have what is known as a camera solver constraint. It, a camera co solver constraint which basically copies the motion that is in the movie clip editor and it basically copies it to the camera in Blender. So the way we're going to, so we're going to need to give this camera a camera solver constraint. So we're going to go into the constraints panel and we're going to go ahead and enable choose camera solver. And now if we were to view for the, through the camera and play back, you can see that our cube is moving along with our, our video camera, if you want to put it that way. So we've given this camera a camera solver constraint, but there's a little problem here. We have our camera solver constraint, but uh, the the empties or the um, motion track um, motion tracking empties uh, are just sitting in world space. And let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and set up a floor plane for these. Now this will take me a little bit of time, so I'll go ahead and split the view right here, and I'm actually going to speed up time setting up a floor plane. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so by the looks of it, it we uh, I apparently can't set a floor plane because otherwise the camera will be just you know pointing at the cube, uh, uh, above the camera. It will basically be pointing at the camera. So we're basically going to need to rotate it into um a comfortable space. So what we're going to do, um, right now you'll see that the um the three D cursor is at the center of of the of the grid. And same goes for the cube. So we basically, if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to, you know, position it, um, rotate our camera so that it's looking at the cube in the way we want it, we basically need to rotate around the cube or the 3D cursor right here, which is at the very center. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the pivot point to 3D cursor 
and we're going to go ahead and look through the camera and we're going to go ahead select the camera and we're going to go ahead and hit r x and we're going to rotate it just a little into view actually let's go ahead and view it from the top so let's go ahead and rotate it into view and that'll probably that'll probably be good let's take a look uh, through the camera and let's rotate it just slightly this will probably take me a little while when i get things pretty much how i want uh pulling it up this right here and we'll rotate on the z axis y axis and go ahead and position it right where the empties are and All right, that'll do for now. You can fix it however you like. So now we have this cube. Um, we we already positioned our camera right into a pretty good space. So now what's the next thing that we need to do is we need to add in a floor plane. So we're gonna go ahead and hit um Shift A, and we're gonna add in a plane. And then we're going to now we're going to need to uh, scale this plane a little bit. So we're gonna hit S. I'm gonna type in eight. So we pretty much get oh, or better yet, let's go let's go ahead hit N to end bring up the properties, uh, you know or the well, whatever. Go ahead and hit N to bring up the properties panel and set the dimensions to eight for the X and the and eight for the Y, and there we go. Now currently uh, now we select the plane right here actually, and then we'll hit M and we gotta make sure it's on the background layer or the sixth layer so which, which is already it so we're good we're good from there all right so now um we already added a plane and you'll see that it's called plane so let's actually rename it so let's go to object and rename this to ground so we'll do the same thing for the um the mesh data the mesh data okay you know let's go ahead and actually let's go ahead and rotate the camera around just a little bit more because it doesn't seem to look right to me so more okay that'll do that'll do for now and for right now go ahead and select the cube and let's uh set it to the um active element uh medium point and let's go hit to go into edit mode and then go ahead and hit g z one to move it up one blender unit and then let's hit enter and go back to object mode and go ahead and select both the cube and the plane and let's scale it down just a little bit because i don't really want it to be that big okay let's position it right uh in between uh the empties right here so we can ensure that we uh you know get a fairly good stable track and let's go ahead and select a plane and we'll go into edit mode now this is going to be up to you base so basically based on the scene of your movie clip go ahead and edit the vertices and edges of your plane to match the ground of um your movie clip now i'm going to speed up time so that way you can watch me do it as um as you can as you do it yourself so i'm going to um edit the properties of the ground real quick and of the ground plane real quick and then i'll come back to you once i'm finished okay so i'm going to speed up time here and then i'll come back to you so i'll see you guys here in a minute
All right, so that should be okay for now. Um, I mean, it could be better, but you know, I'm just going get, trying to give you a quick tip, but it's not quick at all. <laughs> um, anyway, so now that now that we have um everything in our 3D scene scene ren uh, ready, now it's time to get onto the hard part, which is um setting up the uh, composite, which is setting up the compositing tree. So we're gonna go into the compositing layout, check enable use nodes, and select backdrop. Okay. So, currently we have a, a render layer and a compositing node, and the render layer is set to the foreground layer, but let's go ahead and disconnect these two for the time being, and let's zoom out here, and let's hit Shift A, and we'll add in a viewer node. Okay, let's deselect everything with A, B for box select, and we'll hit, um, go ahead and hit G. And we're going to move these way far out to the left here because we're going to be adding a whole lot of nodes in here. Okay, so first node that we're going to add is a movie clip node, which will contain the um, movie clip that we uh, already tracked in the movie clip editor. So we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to add in a uh, movie clip. And it's already set to. Um, Old Barn Shed, which is the um, uh, movie clip that I use um, in this um, in this tutorial, so we're fine for now. Let's move this layer down here. We'll hit Shift A. We'll add a render layer, and we're gonna go ahead and set that to background. And we'll move these up just a little bit. And for the movie clip node, we'll hit Shift A, and we'll add in a um, movie distortion node. Make sure it's set to understort because we did have some. I did say we have some lens, lens distortion. Uh, feed that into the understortion node. Hit Shift A. Uh, we'll add in a scale node. We'll set the um, set it to render size right here, and we'll feed this and we'll feed the understortion node into the scale node. We hit Shift A. Add in a mix node. Set that to multiply. And we'll feed the scale node into the top um, row here. Then we're going to go ahead and hit Shift A, and we'll add in an Alpha Over node, and we'll feed the Multiply node into the top section of the Alpha Over node. We'll move this down here, and let's take a look at it through the Viewer node real quick. Okay, so it shows just a white picture. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to add some more notes here in a moment. So we're going to go ahead and for the background render layer, we're going to go ahead and hit Shift A, and we're going to add in an invert node. Let's disconnect this for the time being, because we really I don't think we need to see that. I really don't think I should. I can. Um, I don't really want you to feel epileptic. Or I want to put it that way. Uh, let's zoom out here really quick. Trying to zoom out. There we go. Okay, so once we have the invert node in there, we enable RGB and and we'll feed in feed the alpha alpha into the color node. Now we're going to hit Shift A, and we'll add in another mix node. And this time we're going to select Add. And we're going to feed the color end into the top, into the top section of the image. Up into the top row, if you want to put it that way. Next we'll hit Shift A again, and we'll add in a, another Add node. You could just, of course, duplicate it from there, but, you know, whatever. We'll feed this into the upper row. We'll hit Shift A again, and we'll add in a mix node. We'll make this a multiply node, and we'll feed the upper add node into the top row, and we'll feed the second add node into the bottom row. And with this multiply node right here, let's go ahead and move these out of the way, and move these. Whoops. Like this, compositing. Oh, G. 
G to move it. And right here, for this multiply node, let's go ahead and feed the multiply node into the bottom of the multiply node. Let's see how that looks um, when composited. So let's feed that into the viewer node and still white, okay? But don't worry, this is right, okay? So now go ahead and the alpha and go ahead and feed go ahead and feed the alpha over node into the bottom row of this add node. And hopefully they'll get somewhere. So let's take a peek and see. And still wait, okay? And we'll feed the sh and we'll feed the shadow into the bottom row. Now let's see how it looks. Maybe we'll get an image. I'm not sure. Nope, nothing. Okay. So now we're going to now we're going to add the uh, node samples for the foreground layer. So Shift A, and we'll add in a filter, and that'll be a vector blur. We'll feed the image uh, row into here. We'll feed the Z into the Z, and feed the speed into the speed. And we'll go ahead and set the blur amount to 0.75. And finally, we feed the vector blur node into the alpha over node. And now, if we had to view this in the viewer node, you could see our movie clip. But current, but you don't see the cube or the plane, and this, and the reason why you don't, and the reason why you don't see the cube or the plane is because they are currently, um, uh, they are currently being in the three D viewport, and stuff that is, and the render layers that are part of the three D viewport need to be rendered from the three D viewport first before they are shown in the com in before they're shown into the compositor. So we'll be this into the compositor, we'll hit F12, and let's see how it looks. Really quick. So it's rendering a little quickly because I shot this um, at uh, 720 pixels by 480 pixels, which is pretty small, but, you know, I think, I think it'll do. And... Hmm. All right, so I think the shadow is probably a little too bright here, so maybe we could change that real quick. Uh oh, right. Oh yeah, the lamp. I forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. So uh, you see the lamp right over here. Um, we forgot to um, you know, uh, we forgot to set up some good lighting for our scene right here. So let's go to the lamp properties. And we'll change it from point to sun. And let's go ahead and hit G and move that about right here. Because I think that's where the light's coming from. That's just my guess. It could be somewhere else. But, you know, this isn't a final project. But uh, let's go to, uh, let's go ahead and hit use nodes. And let's set the, and let's select the eyedropper tool in the color panel. And let's select uh, a bright, uh, let's select some of the whites, and that'll do. And let's set the strength to 0 0.6. And let's go ahead and rotate our lamp. Uh, I think, I think the light is pointing... I think it's pointing this way, but I could be wrong. Just an estimation. Hmm. Let's rotate it into view, and I think after we do this, I think we may need to have. Change the ambient occlusion settings in the world panel. Uh, let's take a look, see what it looks like in render view first. Uh, 
we probably could make it uh, a little less brighter. So how about four? Hmm. Try a two. Nope. 20.7. Okay, 20.25. All right, that'll do for now. Okay? So, hmm. Uh, let's see how that looks in, uh, when we render it out first. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, so basically all you need to do is to, that, another good thing about uh, motion tracking that is very important is good lighting. Because if there is light in your uh, recorded scene, it's important to know where the light is coming from. Although I could be wrong, and this shadow is still a little bit bright. Uh, maybe it has to do something with ambient inclusions. Uh, actually, no it doesn't. Maybe it has to do something in the compositing. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, hmm. Is it... Oh, yeah, I forgot. I completely forgot. <laughs> Billy me. Um, so, um, uh, the factor should be set to 0.8 for this one, and for the next multiply, that should be set to 0.8. Okay, so, I did forget to mention, set the factors, both, if you're using a multiply node, set both factors to 0.8, set them to both to 0.8, and, um, leave the add, um, nodes at their default value, okay? And hopefully, if we were to render this out, you could get, you know, a good render result. So let's, uh, wait, let's zoom back in here really quick. So, so the, let's take a look at our final render. I'm thinking that this will be a little bit better. Yeah, that's better. Completely better. See? Not that much shadow. Not that much shadow, so it's not completely opaque black. So, yeah, it's good. Alright, so this is our compositing um, tree. Um, I think I'll put a screenshot of... Uh, I think I'll put a screenshot at the, uh, at the end of this video. Um, probably somewhere in this video what the node tree will look like. So yeah, so this is our node tree right here. And yeah, I'll let you take a look at this and maybe I'll put in a screenshot, but you know, hopefully you get this. All right, so that's our node tree and we are, and we are almost ready to render. The last thing that I wanna do is I wanna add in the audio from, um, you know, the video that I just recorded. So let's get out of here, and we're going to actually add in the audio via the video sequence editor. So once again, so we're gonna, so we're gonna leave compositing, we're gonna head over to video editing, and let's go ahead and add in a scene. And we'll add scene. Preview. Hit end to bring up the properties panel. Make sure OpenGL is pre is uh, preview is enabled. Otherwise, um, it'll just show you what it looks like when rendered, which is not an idea. And let's set this to the second channel. And then now we're going to need to add in the audio of the our movie clip. So we're gonna go to add sound. And currently, um, and currently, um. If we were to look into our videos right here, uh, we are looking to my videos and Blender tracking test footage, and this is where um, this is actually where I where I kept our our movie clip in the original raw footage. I know I put this in here, but it's not showing up. Um, it's not showing up, and that's because Blender is actually trying to find uh, is basically. Based on these things right over here, Blender is going to be looking only for sound files. 
So in order to show movie files, click the show movie files button and it will show up and it will show you all the uh, movie clips in there. And I'm going to select oldbarnshed.mp4. Um, let's actually make it M movie because that's actually, I think that's going to get better audio quality. And let's go ahead and add in the sound strip. And next. And this will be fine for now. And let's enable caching and draw waveform. And yeah, let's go ahead and set it the end frame to uh, 344. Uh, that'll do. And of course, now. Now it'll render both the now when you render it it'll render the composited uh, three it'll render the three D composited scene and the audio when you hit render because you know the sequencer um, because the post processing is set both to compositing and sequencer when you render so if we were to you know let's go into compositing and uh, actually no let's not go into compositing let's actually go back to the default layout. And let's play in the video, the video, and see what, actually the animation, and see what happens. Yeah. Um. So it'll do. It'll be fine for now. Um. It's a little bit slippery, but you know, I'm not gonna bother doing all that because I think probably <laughs> this probably took. This isn't even a quick tip at all. <laughs> I think I should be call this a tutorial from now on because they're not even quick anymore. <clears throat> so, anyway, we have our, you know, our scene set up, and so, and so, yeah. Um, that's basically how you create a basic um motion track. That's how you basically create a basic motion tracking scene in the Blender Cycles render engine. Now, once again, I think this will go the same way for Blender Internal. I'm not sure. If you want to learn more on how to uh, set up the uh, tracking scene from scratch, I suggest you watch the compositing chapter in uh, Sebastian Koenig's uh, Track Match Blend DVD, which could be found at Blender the Blender Cloud at cloud.blender.org once you subscribe to it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so that's basically what you need to do to set up the basic uh, tracking scene in Blender. So now that you know how to do this, you could basically, um, I don't know, um, probably do some some other stuff with it now that you know um, uh, how the uh, system goes. I mean, you could probably, in the compositor, after you set up this node tree, you could probably add in uh, some color correction in here. You can, you know, add some color correction into here. I mean, well, maybe you could do, you know, like this. For this, Ooh. that actually looks pretty nice. Probably do something like that. I mean, that actually looks pretty nice. I mean, well, I think, yeah, but I think uh, the video needs to add just a little color correction. But you know, this is up to me. I mean, it looks kind of cool. I mean, so I'll keep that. And you can also add more objects, you know, like a monkey head or stuff like that. Uh, you can add in, you know, the lamp. And maybe you can add in a uh, a monkey. Actually, I think I'll do that real fast. Let's add in a monkey real fast. And let's see how that looks. Uh, let's add in the monkey. See how that looks. And then the monkey head. Make sure the PC Santa is working with the right orientation. So the full screen, the baby. Uh, okay, this, this, 
and use the camera. Well, let's uh, go to the toolbar by pressing T and let's make this uh, smooth. Uh, let's, let's fix the normals. Good. Uh, I think that'll do. So we added the monkey in, and like I said, it's going to be up to you. Sorry, I just thought what would have happened if, you know, I added the monkey in there. But, you know, so that's basically how you set up the node. Uh, just basically set up the basic tracking scene uh, for your motion tracks. I mean, pretty... So, now I'm pretty sure that after you learned all this information, you could pretty much uh, make this... Um, you can edit this tree and make it your own. You can edit this um, scene setup and make it your own. I mean, um, let's. I mean, you get a, Let's go ahead and test out the final result because, um, you know, I'm. I'm like the color correction and the idea of a monkey in here, or, Maria, or Susanna or whatever. So let's go ahead and render it. But yeah. Um. So yeah, that's basically how you set up a basic tracking scene. Um. In in Blender, but uh. Oh, right, I forgot about that. I forgot. I completely forgot. Again, it should be, the objects, remember, should always be on the first layer, the very first layer, or the foreground layer. Uh, wait. Hmm. Let, actually, let's take a look. Let's do a full render again. Do a full render again. Take a look. Let's see. Uh, you know, I think that's all right. So one thing I did forget to mention, always have your objects in the foreground. Make sure you have all your objects in the foreground layer and the ground on the background layer, okay? All right, so that's just basically, you know, how to set up a basic um, basic tracking scene. And if you want to encode this out along with your sound, make sure um, once you add in the sound, make sure compositing sequencer is enabled. And then save it to where you desire. And then go ahead and hit render. I'll just render this out real fast. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, sorry it was a little longer than expected. Probably gonna have to work on that. But anyway, hope you learned something from this. I am the Blender Bro, and as always, keep on blending, bro!